Drown cola insulator, lots of bricks, I really hate them. Crowbar, see how far things I found below. In the first part of this video, we had left off at about 16 feet deep into what would have been a late 1700s to early 1800s well, which was eventually turned into a privy. In use this way from 1880 to about 1940, when the property finally got public sewer. At this point, the greatest challenge became processing the thick black mud from the bottom to find artifacts inside of it. My solution was to use a system of screens and collection barrels to process all the muddy and wet material. Here's how my operation worked on site, now down to about 22 feet. I thought I'd bring you guys along today to see exactly what I do here at the well site. All right, so I got to get the water out of the bottom. Of course, I put a weight on the side of my bucket. It'll tilt over in the water and I'll bring it up. The next thing I got to do is lower my buckets down into the site. Lower them on down. This is how I go down, hands in front of me. Always wedge my foot along the rocks here. And then on the bottom of the rung of the ladder, because man, it is muddy down here and I don't want to be crushing artifacts, so I got them. And uh, yeah, there's a little view up for you guys. This is how I go about scooping a lot of this out. Say the least, this is not the nicest consistency of stuff. Where you guys are is about six foot on my head. <laughs> so that would be about where the fill stopped. And then where all the privy stuff went. And here, as you guys can see, there's only enough really room for three buckets and the ladder, my shovel, and of course me here. So uh, yeah, it's not the easiest uh, environment down here. I'll hook this guy up a while and I'll go on up my uh, ladder here and pull her out. I'll hook these other two guys. Alright, turn around. Now that I'm in my little spot here, I already have that one carabiner on. So I'm just going to look up here, get my rope untied. And I'm going to pull my first bucket up. I'll take some stuff I found down there. And as you guys can see, the consistency of this stuff is just total mud. Gotta process it here through the screen. I'll show you guys how we do that then. I'll show you how I set this up to bring the rest of the buckets up. I make myself a two-sided hook. I take my knot and shore it up. It keeps the two out and basically I send this down, hook my bucket handles and uh, pull them on up. What I do is I lean out over here guide the rope up with my right and lower down with my left to aim it takes a little bit sometimes but better than climbing up and down and hooking them and then right there got a hold of it I put tension on with this arm pull it up into the box and we'll bring her on up yep, I'll sit right here beside me <laughs> story of my life <laughs> oh man I always run my handles the same way each time so it makes it a little easier to know where they are and navigate. It's not that easy to see down there of course. Alright to process this runny stuff we're going to put it through the screen into the barrel here. Get through this mucky mess and see what the heck we got. Alright now that I'm done this I don't think there's anything in it I'm going to go and chuck it over here on the pile. It's messy but uh, yeah, it goes through the screen pretty easy. There's a bone things like this I don't know what the heck oh wow oh wow I found teeth look guys look teethers nice check that out that is so cool kind of gross but uh, but cool it's not your traditional bottom of a site that's for sure something new though got my honey dipping badge now basically I just start all over again get this stuff like I said back there and uh, yeah, old Ralphie and I, <laughs> just round and round we go and one bucket after another. There you guys have it. 
As I dug deeper and deeper, my greatest concern became the stability of the site. So twice a week, I would give it a quick inspection to make sure it was holding up so that I could continue my dig. Every couple days I like to inspect the well and today I'm going to bring you guys along and show you what exactly it is I look for when I do this. First things first is I keep a lot of the stuff that I dug out on the walls. This way if anything starts to give it's going to give a little bit of a warning to me. We'll go down inside and I'll show you guys more of what it is I look for. When I inspect the well I actually go and I make my way down here and what I want to do is make sure these braces are still in here firm and braced correctly, which look good. Now we're going to go down even farther. Now that I've checked that upper portion, we're going to make our way down here into the well. Now since this site's been open as long as it has, it can begin to shift and move and potentially uh, become a hazard to you. If you look over here to my right, You'll see I leave a lot of this on the walls in case something would start shifting. I had mentioned this before. I, I leave this on the walls to alert me. But if you look real close, there's pieces like this. That needs to come out. If that would hit me, that would do some damage. So that would not be cool. There's little pieces I go around and wiggle and see what's up with them. <laughs> Making sure they're not loose. Nothing's coming out. Nothing's bulging. Nothing is a funky shape in here that's what I want to make sure is not going on and of course as I work my way down I look both down as well as up and brace myself as you can see against the wall of the well with the ladder behind me here so this is how I can go about inspecting the well I need to make my way down but I think you guys get the picture at 26 feet I finally hit bottom so I decided to tally up all the artifacts that I had found all right I want to show you guys everything that I got out of the well here uh, first things first that's all the stuff that's getting tossed back uh, that's some bottles I'm iffy on back there these plates and things I'll probably reassemble there's some drinkware that's still in one piece and then here's all the best of the best all the cool stuff that I got that uh, it's either good evidence or really nice bottles as far as color and shape and then of course my beloved bones and all kinds of other stuff uh, I want to make a light out of that I'll probably cut the mouth out of that use some of that textured glass and then there's pottery it has some good uh, patterns on it then a broken mason with some good uh, graphics and other stuff on it and then two broken goblet bottoms and then here's uh, just all the junk it's too broken too busted just want to give you guys an overall view of everything I got laid out here to photograph and uh, yep good to have it wrapped up I know old Ralphie he's relieved too as always right buddy good boy by the end of the excavation I had recovered over 250 artifacts from the site a lot of them were smashed but some were still intact one neat one was this drumfish skull that had been turned black by the coal ash another thing was this denture it was about a 1920s upper partial I also found quite a few bottles and jars and even pharmacy bottles as well. Even found a bottle with some gold paint inside. By the end, I had found a ton of cool objects with of course my favorite being this Dr. Jones liniment bottle I had found early on. The property owner and I decided to have some fun and toss back a bunch of junk that had been brought up out of the site. We also did some of our own homemade we'll call pyrotechnics. The next day, the property owner had a dump truck show up with 21 tons of stone to thankfully fill the site and save me quite a bit of work. The dirt that had been removed from the site was removed by a backhoe onto another dump truck and removed from the property. 21 tons. In the end, this is one of the most rewarding sites I ever dug and the deepest site I ever dug at 26 feet 7 inches. I hope you guys enjoyed my overview of the old well turned privy and as always onward and inward to the next site.